Welcome grade 12s to the negative feedback mechanism. Now, very important in our endocrine system. Why? Because in life, we need feedback in everything that we do. Do you agree? Yes. For example, I'm awaiting feedback from you. Is the learning going well? Are my videos teaching you well? You might be awaiting feedback from your teacher after writing a test. Now children, the endocrine system functions on this feedback mechanism. Why? Because one triggers the other and that's how the system runs. What is this negative feedback mechanism that I am going on about? Let me explain. Now there are certain things that need to be kept constant in the body. Like what? Like the levels of glucose, the levels of carbon dioxide, water, as well as salt levels amongst others. They need to be kept constant within narrow limits, meaning within the range that they are supposed to be at. If there is an imbalance in any of these substances, meaning if the level becomes too high or if the level becomes too low, then information of this imbalance will be reported or fed back to a controlling center. And this controlling center can either be your CNS, which is your central nervous system, or it can be an endocrine gland. Now, this controlling center will then send messages either through a nerve impulse, if it's the CNS, or through hormones, if it's the endocrine system, right? Why? To bring about a negative response, that is, to oppose the imbalance such that the normal levels of these substances are restored. What happens is that in this way, levels of these substances is maintained and this is what we call negative feedback. Let's look at the definition for a negative feedback mechanism. It is a process whereby the response by the effector is opposite to and reverses the stimulus, right? It is a process whereby the response by the effector is opposite to and reverses the stimulus. So whatever the stimulus was, for example, if sugar levels were high, the effector coming from the hormone bringing about a response is insulin. And where does it happen? Yes, it happens in the liver. What happens in the liver? Insulin lowers the sugar level. So what was the stimulus? High sugar. What was the response? Lower sugar. Why? Because we want the sugar level to return to normal. And that's important there. Now, we want to now look at the interaction between the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland as an example of this negative feedback mechanism. Right, let's look at the relationship between the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland. In the slide, you will notice that there are different headings. Look carefully. Do you see normal level? Now, normal level in our slide represents where the thyroxine level should be when it's normal, right? So this is the level where the thyroxine should be if the thyroxine level in the body is normal. But sometimes things happen, right? And you'll find that the thyroxine levels in the body start to drop. And then when that happens, there'll be a series of events that follow on how to bring it back to normal again. Then there are circumstances that lead to maybe thyroxine becoming elevated or raised in the blood. In that case, what happens? Then a series of events follows in order to bring back that thyroxine level to normal levels again. Let's take a look. Let's look at scenario one. What's the problem? The thyroxine level is just decreasing in the blood, right? The thyroxine level is lower than normal in the blood. What is going to happen? 
this decreasing level of thyroxin now becomes a stimulus, right? This stimulus is automatically picked up by the hypophysis, which is also known as the pituitary gland. Children, at this point, I want you to remember that the hypophysis or the pituitary gland is our control center and it doesn't change. It is the control center. So now this control center, which is the hypophysis, also known as the pituitary gland, it's going to pick up this stimulus, which is the decrease in the level of the thyroxine. And what do you think it is going to do? It starts to secrete more TS. H, right? So what does the pituitary gland do? It starts to produce more TSH. When it starts secreting more TSH, what will happen next? That TSH now will go to the thyroid gland and what will it do at the thyroid gland? Yes, the thyroid stimulating hormone starts to stimulate the thyroid gland to start producing more thyroxine. So what happens is now the thyroid gland is stimulated. It's going to start producing more thyroxine. Now the thyroxine levels in the blood start to increase. It starts to rise, bringing back the thyroxine levels in the blood to normal. So what was the stimulus? Low thyroxine levels. What was the response? To increase the thyroxine levels so that it could be brought back to normal in the blood. Let's look at scenario two. Now what happens if the thyroxine levels in the blood is too high? What's going to happen now? Immediately the control center, which is the hypophysis, also known as the pituitary gland, it's going to become sensitized or stimulated. What stimulus is it responding to? The stimulus is an increase in the thyroxine levels in the blood. So what's going to happen now? It prepares itself to inhibit the thyroid gland from producing more thyroxine. Either it is inhibited and doesn't secrete any more TSH or it starts to produce less TSH at a time. So in that case, what happens? Then the thyroid gland is not going to be stimulated. And if the thyroid gland is inhibited and not stimulated, what will it do? It will not release thyroxine. And if it doesn't release thyroxine, then what will happen? It will lead to a decrease in the thyroxine levels, bringing back the thyroxine levels to normal in the blood. What was the stimulus there? High thyroxine levels. What was the response? A decrease, bringing the levels back to normal. Now children, we must remember that the negative feedback mechanisms are also controlling blood glucose levels, okay? Now, the concentration of glucose to children must be carefully regulated or controlled at all times in order for it to stay within the normal glucose level or the normal glucose range. On the other hand, too little glucose can leave one feeling extremely weak and dizzy. So children, we have to ensure that the blood glucose levels are regulated. Sometimes there is an imbalance when it comes to the blood glucose levels. Sometimes the person might experience a low blood glucose level or sometimes the person's blood glucose level might be extremely high. So the negative feedback mechanism controls this blood glucose level, making sure that it always stays at a normal range. Let's take a look at how the glucose levels in the blood is regulated. Just to recap, in the pancreas we have the islets of Langerhans. We also know that in the islets of Langerhans we have the alpha and the beta cells. The alpha cells is responsible for the secretion of glucagon while the beta cells is responsible for the secretion of insulin. What does this insulin and glucagon do? It is responsible for controlling the concentration of the glucose level of the blood. Now, scenario one. Imagine that the blood glucose level 
decreases below the normal levels. What happens to restore it back to normal? The alpha cells in the pancreas is stimulated. And when the alpha cells in the pancreas is stimulated, she starts to secrete glucagon into the blood. The glucagon then travels in the blood to the liver. In the liver now, what happens is that the glucagon stimulates the conversion of stored glycogen into glucose. Then the glucose level in the blood starts to increase. The glucose level in the blood then returns to normal. What was the stimulus? Low glucose level in the blood. What was the response? The response was the secretion of glucagon and the glucagon increased the blood sugar level. How? By stimulating the conversion of glycogen to glucose so that it could be released into the bloodstream, increasing the blood sugar level in that way. Let's take a look at scenario two. Now the glucose level in the blood increases above normal levels. What happens? Now the beta cells in the pancreas is stimulated. And when the beta cells in the pancreas is stimulated, it starts to produce insulin into the blood. The insulin travels in the blood to the liver. Then in the liver, the insulin stimulates the conversion of the excess glucose to glycogen, which is then stored. The glucose level in the blood then starts to decrease and the glucose level in the blood returns to normal. What was the stimulus? High glucose level in the blood. What was the response? The response was to decrease the blood sugar level. How? By secreting insulin. And then the insulin helped to reduce the blood sugar level by stimulating the conversion of the glucose now into stored glycogen in the liver, decreasing the blood sugar level. Hope you enjoyed our video. Like and subscribe.